<clears throat> Sorry for all the silence. If anybody's listening on Zoom, just trying to get this YouTube thing going. Not the most tech savvy, especially when click doesn't work. All right, team, sorry for all that delay. Week two, class three for myself for quarantine jujitsu. Hopefully this is live streaming on YouTube. All this is working out just fine on that, right? Uh, Charles Walker came in here and did, did a couple of goofy things, did, did little things his own way, so the setup's a little bit different. But I'm gonna start the same old way that I always do, nice warm up. And unfortunately, I might make myself a little, or might make my life a little bit hard by moving the camera a little bit to, to the side here. I do have Big Red here, but he's not gonna be participating with me today. But in the meantime, I'm just going to start with side kicks and just do all the basic stuff that I've already been doing here. I like those flies that came one way, the flies that came the other way. Some people do this a little bit lazy. And I kind of noticed that I swung my head with the legs side to side too. So I can kind of check how high my, my leg is going. That seems about 10. Forward, same old thing. As far back and as far forward as we can. Basic warm up. Hopefully, we have enough space in whatever space that you might be in. Do some motions. Switch the legs on there. Try to touch my shoulder blade. It's my favorite way to warm up my chest, my back. And I just tend to rock my weight to one foot or the other. Just to keep the whole body moving. I'm going to keep my feet planted. I'm going to do some torso flips. Some people like to turn their, their heel when you do this. But I feel like it kind of takes away the alleviating pressure from stretching your spine. Not throwing punches. I'm gonna go circles out of my head and neck. I'm sure some of us have been sitting around a lot. It's probably good if you can get up and move your neck around a little bit. Let me show some of my favorite foam roller things too. Kind of Sean Whitmore kind of made me realize, oh yeah, this is something we can do too. I mean, my, a couple of extra things that you may or may not have shown. I don't know how much you showed. It's hard to watch everybody's classes. All right, I'm gonna do just some sets of squats push-ups, and some core work here, okay? Just one minute at a time, if you're following along with the unit, just one minute at a time. Head on my shoulders on the hips, be about our shoulders apart here. I'm gonna go about as low as my hips, and bring myself up. As low as my hips, bring myself up. Just checking, make sure I don't get any text messages, anything going wrong. Keeping the weight on my back heels, also some good advice stolen from Sean. Do that for a living. Sorry for mumbling under my breath, team, it's kind of Difficult to project your voice when you're not talking to anybody. I'm just going for this minute, probably about 30 seconds left. Yep. Head around my shoulders and the hips, keeping my weight on my back heels. I like to lift up above the equator on this. Almost done, almost done, almost done. My knees are cracking. There we go. Oh, I hate that sound. Stop that sound. 
All right, down for a push up before a parachute. This is mostly just for me, but you should have your own warm up routine before you do anything. Warm up before your workout. Oops. Coming up, I'm thinking about flexing my core, exhaling in through my nose, exhaling through my mouth, getting those good push ups in. Really important. That's your movement, very important. Very important for the next one, too. Almost over, it's almost over. I'm pretty warm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, in the nose. In through your nose, wake up, stretch. Exhale through your mouth, flexing your core. Never hold your breath. These are for quality, not quantity. Well, in this case, it's for time. Anytime I make a class, I do this. I just do it as long as I feel necessary. Sorry, it's about to bug me. It happens. Once again, I'm locking my breath through our movement. In through my nose. Exhaling through my mouth. Never holding your breath. First rule of Jiu Jitsu, don't choke yourself. Keep breathing. Don't worry. You're going to gas yourself out a lot. All this will do. It's kind of a good thing. Should be almost done at this point. There it is. All right. So, our goal is to help us with as many soul motions as we can, given the quarantine situation, right? Um, uh, we have some situations here where we have padded posts, but, uh, you know, I've seen everybody getting really creative, maybe like you can wrap a pillow around a, a post or, you know, having a human do that too, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm going I'm to be trying to use, I'm going to try to show everybody some motions that are going to help you out. When, whether you need to get out of side control, some guard work. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show all the basic stuff that you can do within your own space, but I'm also gonna show you how to use as many motions that I can show here solely uh, with, with an object, with a wall, whatever the situation is. Okay. So the first one's gonna be super easy, but we are gonna use it, which is gonna be the windshield, windshield wiper motion. So the streamer motion or windshield wiper motion, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna start with the inside motions. And it's gonna be mostly the motion that we're gonna be using uh, when you guys see me demonstrate a bunch of moves today. Circling with the heels, and right? our rotation comes from our hips, not necessarily our knees. My hips tend to be really flexible. Definitely not my knees these days. Used to be, used to be a huge fan of the rubber guard. Not so much these days. I kind of value being able to walk. I'm gonna switch to the outside on this. So about three seconds to that. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe it was unintentional. I used to only be able to go this direction. I used to only think this is the only direction to go. Not be able to go in. I just like to tell stories about what I used to be able to do versus what I can't do. Kind of always say that this is the art of being unsurprised at your abilities, especially if you didn't to get your butt kicked for a lot of the years. Oh, almost done, almost done. Nice. Probably gonna be doing one minute on most of these motions. All right, let's do another one here. Okay, so this is, I'm gonna talk about a concept first. Okay. So if I'm on my back on a flat surface, right? And if somebody's flat and they're on top of me, those, those fit pretty well. Like I, I would like to say, so if you're flat, you're gonna get flat pinned, right? And you, know, you get pressed into the ground and all that sort of thing, right? So if the bottom person becomes a peak, right? That flat surface tends to cascade to one side or the other, depending on what, what, what your goal is, right? And, and they would prefer to obviously to flip you over again. I was talking a lot about that with my dummy, and how there's that predictability of how people turn sideways or not. But anyway, this is what the soul person is going to do. I'm not going to necessarily time it on this. Okay? So this is going to be something I'm going to be saying a lot because we're going to be doing a couple of motions like this. Okay? So obviously, always, always connection to ground. We're ground cars, but we know how to use the ground, not necessarily because we want to be on the ground. 
Uh, there's a lot of different ways to escape the side control. This is just a Gumby's preferred way. I might show you a, a, an old school way that my old, old instructor taught uh, as just a drill. But right now, let's just do this drill here. Okay, so once again, everything is going to initiate from our connection to the ground. Right? Sometimes I have two legs up, uh, but Gumby doesn't like this because if, you, if somebody drives their knee under your hip, right, it's going to be harder for you to do the escape that he prefers, which is one leg up, one leg down, and getting into that space there. Okay, so I'm going to start this by reaching past my hip, and obviously just in general, keeping my arms nice and tight is always a good thing. I might show some different positioning here in a little bit, but just for right now, we're going to keep our arms nice and tight. So that's always that first thing that happens is I reach out with my foot, past my hips, because I want my hips to travel, okay? Through that connection, ground, foot, knee, hip, shoulder, right? I'm able to turn myself sideways. Now I'm at peak, right? So if somebody's trying to flatten me, it's going to be a little bit harder because they're going to cascade to one side or the other. So by wanting to stay sideways, and there might be reasons for me to move out, there's a lot of reasons for me to move out. I'm just going to track myself out and in a full circle. Okay, so I'm going to reach out, I'm going to stay sideways, I'm going to track myself out in a full circle. Okay, I'm trying to stay in this shot here as much as I can. I'd probably be a little bit more renovated on it. But I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to another situation here. Okay, another big detail too, when I bring my hip and my shoulder up, notice that my toes and my knee are now scraping along the ground. That's not necessarily the most important thing now, but it's going to be kind of important when you really need to use this against an opponent here. Okay, I'm going to reach out with my foot. I'm already sideways, but if I was flat, that's the first thing that needs to occur. It's very hard for me to just bring my shoulder up and move myself up. That's, that's saying that I want to use all this core strength and all this upper body strength, but usually they're, they're just trying to flatten your, your, uh, your upper body, but not necessarily your lower body. So if I can try to bring this one corner that's not being managed, hopefully, I can start to bring that corner up, my shoulder up. And now I'm a little bit sideways. Now I'm a little bit better off from being flat on this. Just keeping my arms tight. I'm going to give it another circle. Let's just reach out, reach out. Hopefully I'll stop on my phone. Almost did. Well, I'm just trying to keep my arms nice and tight. Cool. So that's just being able to move in a circle. Generally, you won't have to use more than one, two, or three of those motions, but it's just good to be able to move uh, in a circle being sideways. Very, very important. So let's work on another motion that I used to do wrong. I was preaching about in some other classes where I hated wrestling. I hated the turtle position, or at least north-south turtle position, getting flattened and all that, because I definitely was doing it wrong, getting up wrong. And I'm, I'm set, setting myself up in this direction here because you guys are kind of like in my side control at this point, right? So generally when people want to try to just get up, if I didn't track my body out, you're going to be moving into something that's going to flatten me forever. And I'm going to you know, describe the same thing when I get to, to the wall over here, okay? So we have to still do that same thing, move our hips away, okay? Uh, I'm not going to be doing too much of a dynamic, dynamic motion, not like so I'll explain more of it on, on the post, but right now we're just going to do that same old thing, reaching out, okay? Hip, shoulder, come up, okay? So a big mistake when people do this motion, I'm going to be escaping up to turtle or going for a double leg, whatever, whatever you prefer to do. I don't want to take my own foot out on this, okay? I don't want to take my own foot out because that will take my connection away. And if anybody knows anything about pinning somebody or especially wrestling, they lift this leg up, you're just going to be able to pin me again, one, two, three, WWF style. But I'll make sure I keep my connection to the ground. I actually really like pinning people like that. It works really well. Not just because I grew up watching too much professional wrestling, because it works, taking their connection away to the ground, right? The, the knowledge goes both ways. As much as I want to keep my connection to the ground, my opponent should be trying to take it away. Just something for the other side of the coin. Anyway, we're going to be skipping up to a turtle. So don't take your own connection away. Step out in such a way that you have enough space for your foot to pass under. I'm going to be pivoting on my foot. Okay, that's my good connection to the ground. And my shoulder. Okay, the same way that my leg is going to pass under, the same way that my arm is going to pass under. So people make a big mistake here too when they think that they're going to go uh, up. They're not going to go up. You're not going to go up on this. You're going to go under it. If I'm going to go up, that means I'm going to use this astounding amount of core strength to sit up here and try to get up. And once again, if anybody knows what they're doing, they're just going to push you back down because they're in a position where they can use gravity and everything to flatten you out. Okay. I know this is all along with the explanation, but it's all common problems that happen. They're going to happen to you. And hopefully you don't get burned into your brain kind of like I did, where I feel like uh, wrestling doesn't work or the situation doesn't work. And now I can sort of <laughs> wrestle people from standing a little bit better than below, but I, I had that situation burned in my brain. I don't ever want to just, I don't want to go on turtle. So therefore I got really good at this game. Anyway, reaching out, hip, shoulder. Okay, heel comes to my butt, watch this, pass my foot and my arm under. 
Big, big detail on this is what we're going to be really hard on this is keeping that connection to the ground as long as you can. I'm keeping, staying on my, the heel of, of, of my foot or the, the big ball of my toe here. I'm going to go elbows and knees and bring myself to a stroke. Okay. We are going to crawl out and be flat for just a moment, but don't worry, we're not going to stay there long. Reaching out, heel under, right? Well, on the post too, like I might be reaching towards the legs, right? But just to practice the solo motion, arm in the past under, right? I will kind of stall up for a minute. And I'm just going to bring myself here, right? But things are going to act a little bit different over there. That's kind of why my brain's uh, kind of working against me right now. But just a solo motion here. Here, hit, elbows and knees. Bring myself up. I'm going to the other side here. Leg up, leg down. Bring myself up. Turn myself sideways. I'm going to pass my foot and my arm under. Elbows and knees. I'm just going to do that five times each side from different angles so you can see that. Then leg up, leg down, reach out, hit the shoulder, elbows, knees. Reach out, reach out. Definitely admit I'm always better on one side than the other, but that's why we, we do our drills. Hip and shoulder come up, elbows and knees. Show a couple of the, my favorite uh, foam roller workouts here, and then I'm going to get my little production system here to help me move the, move the camera the way I need to and not be too, too much time on this. Okay, so I've read, read uh, as much as I can and as much as, as much as you should when it comes to you know knowing how to uh, use a foam roller properly. Uh, so, just some basic rules for, for memory that I have that to draw from memory from things that I read. So, you're not going not gonna to use it for uh, 20 repetitions on any sort of section of your body, then it's like kind of not worth doing. So uh, I'm not going to necessarily go through 20 on each, but I'm just going to show some of my favorite positions and then you can always go at least 20 or pretty much as needed. But if you're not going to go to 20, it's probably going to be kind of a waste of your time. So obviously the classic and the, the most basic one, especially in jiu-jitsu for us, like our lower back is, is killing us, right? So, you know, sometimes I'll go straight on my spine, right? Just because like I, I get a, a I can get an adjustment out of that. I'm really flexible, and you know, sometimes between chiropractor visits, you gotta do what you gotta do. But you're gonna be aiming for that meat that's on the side of your vertebrae, right? That, that lower muscle tissue there. And I like to have one leg up, one leg down here, and I'm posting kind of like you would for for a hip escape, right? And I'm just gonna work what I need to. I'm not gonna necessarily go to 20, and I kind of tilt my body. And working on that side works really, really good on this, right? I'm just gonna switch to this side just for symmetry. It's very, very important. What you do to one side, you should do to the other for the most part. There's always one side compensates for the other. The human body is kind of interesting like that. If you screw up your foot, right, and the cascading effect comes all the way through up your body to your knee, to your hip, then your back starts hurting. And maybe sometimes randomly, like on that same side, your neck will hurt. The human body is really interesting. Anyway, I'm pretty sure everybody's like, well, I've seen this one and stuff before. Well, I also like this one too, where I have my legs here. I'm going to be working knees out a little bit. It also depends on how sore your, uh, your quads are, right? If you're, if you're more sore, I'd probably throw this down and go like so here. Then moving your weight from one way to the other. Also, depending on how jacked up your hip is, you can go more to the hip space and I really grind the hip on, on that. I'm just gonna show a couple of others, but once again, what I do to one side, I gotta do to the other. I'm not as sore as I should be. All of us aren't really working as hard as you could, but just bear this in mind, right? Always warm up, always make sure you're, you're taking care of your body after, you know, don't just jump off the mat and, you know, get a cold one and throw a burger in your stomach right away, you know, try to stretch out a little bit, right? And I'm saying that for, through experience. So I've shown kind of some stretches that I like to do, moving the legs side to side like this. So I like to get, especially from guard plane, that inner thigh part here. I like to keep my weight on my hand, right? And I'm just using my other hand here to put some weight over that. And that's pretty good there. So I'm just going to get about five or 10 of those. If you don't have a foam roller at home, get one. It's, it's good. As some of us have already have like, massage guns, you know, that's, that's on another level. But just being able to have the foam roller, good. Also, lacrosse ball is good too. I 
forgot to bust it out, but next time I can show my favorite one. I'm rambling. Don't worry, I'm gonna show some good stuff here in a second. Got a lot planned for the, for the post over here. Some guard recovery, some sweeps. All right, here's one maybe you haven't seen, okay? So still, I probably should have showed this, but from that same position, that lower knee of our lower spine, I like to actually throw my forearm between the mat, the roller, and my back here, okay? And depending on how much you do your grips and how, how, how forearms get tired, this is a great stretch. This feels amazing right now. I don't know what it is about the forearm, because they just get amazing, they're gonna be amazing tired. And all this, you see my hand flexing, right? This is all kind of involuntary. My tendons are moving because that's how much I'm smashing. I swear, I'm not moving my fingers. It's just because I'm manipulating it. Boom. See, it's working that exact place where your fingers would be grabbing. Exactly. It's kind of creepy, but it's kind of cool at the same time. There's probably a couple others that, others that I could think of, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. But I needed this for my own health. Just give me one second, please. Just gonna get some water in my system. We're gonna move this camera. Right. Sorry if there's any noise. If anybody's listening on the camera. I'm really close to the microphone right now. Don't hate me, Gumby. Just gotta do what I gotta do. That's looking good, Chuck. Yeah, that's good. And also, Gumby, don't worry. I didn't put this sticker on there. I'm gonna take it right off. It's just because there's no logo in the background here. Okay. So I'm gonna start off by showing some, some stand-up motion because I probably have more than enough time to show everything that I'm gonna show. So let me just run out of the shop here and get my timer. Okay. So if you're like me, which some of you are, we mostly train jujitsu. Uh, there, there's that small percentage of us that cross train if you came from judo, if you had some sort of wrestling background, or maybe you even had some sort of MMA background or that sort of thing. That's kind of where I started too, had a had a little bit of everything, you know, playing some Muay Thai, doing a little bit of wrestling, doing some boxing, all that sort of thing. I realized I don't like getting punched in the face. But anyway, back to what I was saying before, uh, you're not very good at takedowns because we don't, we don't generally work on takedowns very often. If we're lucky at the end of the cycle, uh, some, of, some of us are showing some takedowns just because we need to work on it. You need to have something. And at the very least, you need to be able to pull guard. But in this case, let's just work on some, a couple of motions. So I only have so many throws in situations in my arsenal. Uh, you only need so many. You need your go-to throws. A lot of us here at Heroes, we have your one or two throws at best. It's good to maybe have four or five situations and some counters to work on. But I'm just going to work on two motions that you can work on on your own because, you know, over and over, we're working on only solo motions, right? But imagine if you're trying to work with a horrible training partner where the situation is. It's hard enough to do these motions on your own, let alone having somebody resisting right out the gate. I'm sure a lot of us have dealt with that with, with having a horrible training partner. Anyway, finally, I'm going to show some, some situations here. So I'm imagining that I have my right hand on the collar, okay? I'm not going one leg forward or one leg back right now because I don't want to show my play, okay? You're going to tell me a lot about what you're, you're trying to do to me with your stance, right? And furthermore, too, if I have this neutral stance, I'm vulnerable to forward and backwards based attacks, but I don't want to just, like, you should be really scared if somebody's just saying, take my leg, and I should also be really scared if somebody's just, like, uh, have this low base, like, they're either going to shoot or they're going to go ahead and go uh, guard pull on that. For that check. Okay. And I will show you some different things that we can do from different stances. You know, main thing, if you have that, if you have a certain stance, whether, whether it's just like forwards, it's like back, whether it's here, whether it's slightly staggered, which, which most judokas would, would prefer, right? So you have some sort of base here, right? Uh, it's going to tell a lot about what you're going to do. Okay. So right now I'm just going to have just, just kind of a neutral stance on this so we can practice. It's just going to be just a quick uh, drop to our knees. Okay. So I'm going to just have my hand on the post, but I'm just showing you in this shot. I'm going to just drop down and I want to make sure I always have my leg up. You don't want to shoot with both knees down, even though you see it happen a lot. I, I see myself doing it. I've recorded myself training sometimes and we end up doing that. But to finish and to drive up, you always need to make sure you have a leg okay, or your leg up. Obviously, I'm, I'm holding an invisible leg. You might be able to shoot up this direction. Um, if I have the other leg up, I might shoot 
this direction, we always need a connection to the ground when we drop, okay? So I'm gonna go through some repetitions of just dropping here, okay? So I'm just gonna set the timer for a minute. And you can do this, or hopefully you're doing this on some sort of mat. This is definitely not good to do on concrete or anything. Uh, just, you know, you work as you can. Some of us have mats. So I'm gonna be here, imagine that I have the collar. I'm just gonna drop and hug like so here. Obviously you can do this with a dummy if you can too, but I like driving in kind of like a, a shoulder tackle sort of thing. So I'll just stop talking over and over. As you can tell, I like to grab somebody's right foot. Yeah, legs up, go, drop here, and legs up. And also note, I'm looking off to the side here. This is what allows me to drive. That's why you see wrestlers, they have their, their, their ears all messed up because they're constantly exposing their ears one side or the other, right? Don't worry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Drive down, drive over here. Sometimes I'm pulling, sometimes I'm pushing, but right now I'm just staying stationary. Drive down. We've got 10 more seconds. Drive down. Boom. In this case, it's just a good old meat and potatoes, basic single leg. You can finish in all kinds of different ways. Time on. Okay, things are going to get a little bit more complicated on this. Okay, so I've been teaching this to people as long as I've remembered it. Uh, so there's this Olympic wrestler at UFC gym. I was watching him just, just work, just work and just flow the way he was flowing. I caught on to a little thing that he was doing where from a single collar tie, he's doing basically kind of a, a standing sit out like duck under situation. Okay. So once again, I have this neutral stance. You know, sometimes you're, you might have a problem with that. You know, you'd be snapping the guy down to bring them up, right? But, you know, just trying to stay stationary and simple with this for now. So instead of dropping down to my left knee, I'm gonna drop down to my right knee. So it'd be almost looking, looking like I'm gonna go for a double leg, but I don't like going for doubles. Uh, I'm just not strong enough to hit doubles a lot of time. Most of the time people are just gonna to try to sit and throw you over and guillotine and all that sort of thing. I prefer to grab singles. So I'm gonna use this as a means to grab my singles. So I look out one direction. This is very, very important. I'm gonna pivot all my weight over my knee. As one knee comes down, other knee comes up. And I went and looked both sides on this. I'm gonna go one more time. Imagine that you're in a collar tie, right? I always wanna be on the inside of both collars, okay? Both, both of his arms. So I'm making their arms go up, drop down, scoop up the leg, and now I'm here. And obviously I'll drive up at that point. So I'm gonna show you some repetitions on the wall for this one. And I'm getting good work on this. Drive, and I'll go faster as I go. Drive. Wrestlers also wear knee pads a lot too. And these are feeling just for two minutes. I remember when we used to have the wrestling classes here. Man, just to kill me. Shout out to Ed Scott, all the whole crew. Miss you guys. I know Ed's fine. He's posting on Facebook all the time. So I was telling you, telling everybody, telling the world, whoever, whoever's listening, your stance is going to tell me a lot about what you're going to do. Okay. So one leg forward, one leg back. You know, this is like your, you know, fight sense. Depending on how you feel, you know, like some of my students, they prefer to be here because, you know, of boxing or whatever. Uh, I used to kind of prefer one leg forward, one leg back. When I, when I was thinking about pulling, right? Uh, so right now, you might, you might be doing no-gi or wrestling, you know, or maybe you're just trying to blast on something. So if you're ever going with me and I have one leg forward, one leg back, I'm probably thinking about the, the side that I want to go double leg. And if I'm going double leg, I like to go on the side that's not my opponent's right arm, okay? I don't know what it is. Anytime you shoot your head onto that side, people are pretty good about getting that guillotine. Or I just see a lot of people get stuck there and screw it up from there, right? Obviously not good wrestlers for the most part. Uh, just like sloppy takedown, you know, everybody's kind of seeing the sort of takedown. Everybody has like some sort of structure of something in their brain, but our setups and our execution and our timing and all that are always kind of wonky. That's, that's where kind of beginners 
separate from the advanced and masters and all that sort of thing. Okay. Well, anyway, back back to some solo motions. So there's a lot of different ways to set up the, to set up the double. You know, there's, there's some lazy ways, there's some good ways. You might be able to grab both of their wrists and I'll snap those down, flip those up. You might still be able to snap the same way from the collar ties, right? I might be able to just go two on one and move the arm out of the way. Or sometimes you can just straight like block their, their vision. Sorry, that's the best way to do that, right? You block their vision and you get out of the way, okay? So bearing in mind that it's hard for me to set up on something that has no arms and isn't resisting, right? So I like going this way because I don't like going to my opponent's right arm. So if I was a human here, you got shot on, you know, for every reason, if you're not right-handed, you don't really catch that guillotine too fast uh, for whatever reason. For some reason, when, as soon as you get your head's on this side, people get really good at that. Anyway, I'm just gonna shoot some doubles on this side, but I'm gonna kind of explain what I'm gonna do on this. You know, I'm always trying to kind of block the vision, do something, right? It's not good to shoot from too far away. So it's really important to find your range, right? Or, you know, posture angle range, all that sort of thing. W talks about the gumbyisms, all that, that sort of thing. You know, and I'm always kind of drawing a line in the sand, depending on where, where they're coming from. If he's moving into me, right, it might be hard to move into a moving object. You know, sometimes when they're moving away, it might be good to step and chase them a little bit. There's a lot of different ways to set this up. But anyway, let's, let's talk about just the basic stuff. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I like to catch people off guard because be, be, being a small guy, like if I hit if I hit a double quick enough and efficiently enough, I'm gonna catch you off guard here, okay? So I'm gonna go one leg forward, one leg back. My left leg forward, my right leg back. I'm gonna step and I'm gonna drive my weight forward to my knee. Kind of forgot to practice dust block for us in the beginning. We're practicing it now. I'm gonna drive my knee down. I'm gonna hug the post. Okay. I'm gonna try to keep my head up and I'm gonna lean it into, into the post here. I'm gonna go to this side for everybody. I'm gonna keep it here. And for, you know, for, for the time being, this is good and I can try to drive, but the post isn't gonna move. So the way that I'm gonna finish this, you know, I might think walk here. I might be thinking level switching a little bit. Walk, step, drive, and I'm moving to the side on that. Okay. So step, drive, I'm always thinking this big sideways wheel motion. I'm not trying to take my opponent straight down to the ground in the guard. I'm trying to go in a circle. Ideally, I'm trying to snap those legs up and take you in a circle. So for the time being, I'm gonna get real tired doing some double legs for everybody. Stuff and we're getting scars, having baby feet back in the day. I'm gonna get bleeding right now. Nice. Sweet. Just give me 15 seconds. Scene. That was a lot of work. motions on the post here as well as we can or whatever situation that you can. Obviously, if somebody has a human being around, they have the arms and the legs, this is all good. They don't even then if they didn't want to use their arms, you don't want to even have those in the equation, that can be a situation too. But obviously, you know, I'll talk about the invisible grips and all that sort of thing too. But I'm mostly just concerned about the solo motions. I'm gonna be working through some, some pretty cool solo motions on this. So if anybody's taking private lessons from me, you know, no, well, if anybody's done private lessons or had to teach private lessons or taken a private lesson, you'll know that that, that third perspective is hard to come by. Like that obviously you're entangled. There's there's three perspectives in jiu-jitsu. There's, you know, there's, there would be me, right? There would be you who's learning on the ground, whoever the situation is. But there also has to be this third perspective of being able to see. 
It's very, very, it's very, very difficult to learn in this, this hands-on situation. So what I do is I, I try to get this third person perspective. I like to try to make people work on the post, work on the dummy, uh, work with your belt, whatever the situation is. So I can see your technique, you know, and the hardest thing too is, uh, my side of the coin, which is feeling that the technique is right or not, but that's where like, you know, they say like the, the money and the knowledge come from, from that, that feeling. It's something you can't teach. You know, imagine if you're working with somebody, who, you know, you're, you showed your technique and you're doing it, you're doing it wrong, but he has no idea you're doing it wrong because he doesn't know what it, what it feels like to be, be right. You know? Anyway, that's where that comes from that, like that frame of reference and perspective of uh, a good technique or a bad technique. So what am I talking about here? So let's go ahead and get to the post here. These are the easy ones first. It's going to be the easy ones. So obviously I can't close, but there's this cool post that UFC gym where you can close your legs. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm mentioning places that we can't go, but if you can fashion uh, any sort of post with, with padding, or like I said, with a pillow, you can close your legs around it. But in this case, I can't close. So I'm gonna be doing everything in a situation where, where my, my guard is open. Yeah. So I always I like to start to whatever object that I'm using as close as I possibly can to it. Because once again, we're trying to mimic a human being, right? So uh, in, in this case, we're just gonna be practicing a good old fashioned scissor sweep setup. And it doesn't necessarily have to be scissor sweet minded. I'm going to show more complicated, but watch this. Okay. I'm going to be going to my good side first. I'm going to be going hips up. Right now I'm going both feet on the ground. That's okay. But eventually I'm going to be turning on my shoulder and taking one leg off of the ground here. Okay. While my hips are still up, I'm going to push off the ground. I'm going to hip escape off the ground. And I want my hips to move off and out to the side here. So if this, this post fell straight down, it should at least fall to the outside of my hips here. This is really important. Hips up and out to the side. That's that other perspective that I was telling you. If, if I was looking from the, the post perspective, I would want to see your hips off to the side. And once again, like this is a hard thing to train to training partners. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Like the top person should be a good observer too. And you're never just showing up just for yourself or if you're showing up to, to help everybody to get better. Because if that person doesn't get better, you're not going to get better. All you learned is that you, you can smash them the same way every day. Well, you want to show them how to fix that. Anyway, I, I digress. So I'm trying to practice with my jujitsu hook, very important. This is the ballerina foot. We don't do any ballerina stuff here unless you're, you're spinning around and dancing like I do sometimes. Using this hook, very, very important. Okay, flexing this muscle, using this, activating this. this I understand why you know, we were, we got a whole seminar from a guy that this was this whole thing because it's something that we don't do enough, right? Across the invisible hip. And you know, the way Gumby likes it is me facing downward here. But I've seen it taught a bunch of different ways, leg up, leg to the middle. Gumby likes it here. Sometimes, you know, I saw Chuck teaching it this way earlier for, for his, his variation. It's not that there's anything is, one thing is more right than the other. It just takes uh, more energy to, to lift. That's what Gumby likes it down because he likes dumping his opponent down on this, okay? So I'm just gonna practice side to side on this. There's really not much more to, to describe on this, uh, but I'm gonna get more complicated as we go along. I don't wanna keep everybody here too long. I'm um, getting through this pretty fast, so let's go. Hips up on my shoulder, out to the side, and I can get together here. And you can imagine your arms too. I can go to my bad side, hips up, out to the side. Hips up, out to the side. I'm just gonna shut up. As much realism as possible. As soon as my hips hit the ground, that's when I kick. Right, it's hard to sweep something. That's a pretty solid structure. It's like Bobby. I'm trying to sweep Bobby right now. Notice how I'm doing my reverse with the sweep every time. This is more work than I thought. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Thank God that one's over. All right, let's move to the sit-up speed variation of this. So once again, my guard's open on this, unfortunately. I can't close the guard. So there's a couple different ways that I allow people to do this one. Okay. So you can kind of cheat and rock with your legs a little bit if that's your preferred method of doing it. Right? But I like always kind of thinking about this, this bite, this hip motion. Right? Kind of use the, the analogy of a, 
you know, like a, a thick piece of aluminum, right? If you ever took a metal shop, you bend it one way, it tends to want to flex back the other way, right? So it kind of creates momentum for the other direction. So I want my hips to go up here, so I'll bring them up. But then as I come down, I'm going to bring myself up. Kind of creates some momentum. Can we practice it on your own? We'll see what I mean. But if the other variation, rock your legs, bring yourself up, that works just as fine. So once again, I'm just going to go ahead and set the timer for one minute so you can watch. We'll be going side to side. So if you miss something on one side, you'll see it on the other side. Now concentrate on keeping both feet connected to the ground to your this, right? Hips up, it looks down. So bring my hips up, my hands on the mat. And obviously it's a little bit wonky with, with the post here, but it is what it is. Hips up, reach, sit across. Hips up, reach, sit across. Hips up, reach, sit across. to the end there. Don't worry, I wasn't cheating by too many seconds. <laughs> All right, team. So while I'm still in the frame of mind of uh, this guard situation, I'm well, probably gonna be doing lots of guard things. But we'll see how much longer this carries us. But I think I'm, I'm right on schedule to show as much as I want to show today. Not that that matters to anybody. Okay, team. So I'm gonna add stuff to that scissor sweep position because it's very, very rare after about eight or nine months of jiu-jitsu and beyond, I don't know, it could be more, that you're gonna be scissor sweeping people. I mean, if you do a super well executed scissor sweep, it's gonna work, but there has to be uh, some other variations and options. There's just gonna be people that you roll it that you know you're not gonna be able to sweep a certain way. I can think about like 10 people I wouldn't try to scissor sweep. So you need to have some other situations in mind, okay? Or just barriers, and there's a lot of different things that we can think about, okay? So I might be in a situation, yeah, I might have got myself out of the hip escape that same way, right? But who knows, I might have had to go for more of like a spider guard style opening where I'll go hips out to the side here and then I'll kind of circle my knee in. And it's, it's hard to, just, you know, obviously this is all flat surface, but I would have to make this motion to go over and around my opponent's arm to get into the inside. And you should be always trying to pummel to the inside of your opponent's arm, right? So if I escape out to the side and my opponent lift and put his arm, his arm under the leg here, some bad things are going to happen. Anybody who, who's worked their soles is going to start to start to stack you, start to drive their knee over, and you kind of screwed up in that regard. Okay. So I'm going to go hips out, right? And now here in the same situation here. Okay. I did less of a dynamic motion with my knee, but that's okay. So watch what we're going to do on this. Okay. Because the tech, I'm, I'm flexible. I could probably put my foot here. To, to track yourself out, to, to disappear this upper part of your body, because a lot of time they're gonna be moving into you, right? I wanna stretch my body out here. Look how I disappear. See, if that post was gonna fall down, it would fall to the outside of me here, okay? Uh, this allows me to put my foot in front here. This might go up, up to where the, the fictional hip would go. See how both of my feet would be tracking my opponent's hip here, one on the hook on the hip bone here, and then I just have my foot on the fictional hip bone here. So I tracked myself out, and I was able to do whatever I needed to do, right? Now I'm up on my elbow. And I would always be trying to keep them from smashing my legs at this point, right? So I'm gonna bring myself up, I'm up to my elbow. So that should mean I should be able to get up to my leg. So watch what's gonna happen here. Hopefully this doesn't get too complicated. This leg is gonna come down, but sometimes I'll keep this up. If anybody rolls with me and I go turtle and I keep this floating hook, I uh, just know some bad things might happen for you, okay? But right now I'm gonna let this leg go down and I'm gonna do an Abraham roll, okay? Shout out to Abraham Marte, uh, really influenced my game a lot. I'm gonna roll over my shoulder, I'm gonna do a big wide motion, and look what just happened. I got an angle. Once again, if the post fell down, it's gonna to fall to the outside of me. This is very, very important. It's a huge revelation for me. He claimed to learn this as a white belt. Well, I didn't learn it until the freaking black belt. I wish I would have learned it a long time ago. So if I'm on the other side here, what's up? Ah, here. Definitely if I'm on my bad side of the hip escape, this is definitely something I'm thinking about. So I'm kind of combining a bunch of seminars that I've learned, uh, or people that I've learned stuff from. Uh, Dustin Dennis was one of them. His big thing was keeping this barrier right. And then Abraham's big thing was all, all that rolling and all that good old school quote guard stuff. So same old thing, tracking my body out, foot in front, uh, 
either on the fictional hip or on the fictional knee here, right? I want to start to get up, right? So getting up, I can block my opponent, maybe thinking about having my thumb inside the collar, bring myself up. This leg's going to come down. I'm going to roll over my shoulder. Open. Look, I got that angle. Why? Because I see that corner. That's the human. If they fell down, they could fall to the outside of me, but I, I still have my opponent in front of me. Always want my opponent in front of me. I never want to be in front of my opponent. I like this drill a lot. It's kind of a new one that I've done. Mostly for the purposes of everybody here. I'm going to get some, some repetitions in on this. Uh, you know, it could be slow. You know, you're trying to control your opponent, thinking about what's going on. So everything went wrong. Well, that's okay. Everything might have been right. You might have trapped everything here. Who knows? So, not just kicking. Well, that's probably not working. Tracking. Up. Down. Functional. Can't tell you how much I've had to do this against some of the big guys. They're just big bullies. Keep them at bay. Keep them at bay. Nice. All right, we're getting through this pretty good. All right, let's see how long it takes me to describe this next time. Once again, still in the guard. Who knows? Maybe I'll save all my side control stuff on this post for later. Cause that's all good stuff too. All right. Sorry, I'm indigesting and stuff. Here. Keeping the post in between my legs on this. Okay. So I'm going to be imagining that my opponent is going to be staffing me. Okay. So if they're going to be pushing this leg over my head, right? If I don't go with the pressure on this, they're 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 going to pass. Okay. So there's a distinct way that uh, a lot of uh, the Brazilians are, would teach the the, the the guard retention, mostly out of the Gracie Baja Academy. I don't know necessarily where it originated. Just I've observed that a lot of the Gracie Baja people. That's where my old instructor is from. He showed me this guard recovery. It's mostly like a flexible man's guard recovery, but it's still important to know how to move your body and go with the flow, especially when somebody's stacking. Okay, I'm really flexible. I can't really apologize for that. I've always been able to kind of throw my leg over my head, and you know, I'm really not the guy you should be trying to stack, right? You should be trying to beat me with my own game. Or if you're way huge, then you know, just destroy me. You know, most big guys can do it if they know what they're doing. Anyway, so I'm going to imagine that this leg is going to be getting stacked. So right away. I'm going to be going with the flow on this, right? Because he'd be trying to move my leg anyway, but I'm going to do this on my own terms, okay? So there's this guy on YouTube. Uh, obviously, we're on YouTube right now, too. There's this guy named uh, BJJ Scout. He's, he's, he's awesome. He, he breaks down the way uh, fighter, fighters' guards work, right? So right now, uh, if you watch him, he, he does what's called, he, he does his red arrows, which are bad arrows, and then the green arrows, which are good. The green arrows signify a good geometry of, uh, like, kickstands and all that good stuff, right? Because if, if, if something was trying to come and, and stack me, or like or if, if my my, uh, my points are up, right, it's very easy for him to move them past the point where I would want to use them, right? So I always want my kickstands to be supporting whatever's coming down. In this case, when my, my post is on my right side here, I've already tried to start to alleviate the pressure, but my angles aren't good yet. Okay, so my, my direction arrows are bad. Remember, direction arrows up, bad. So watch, turning sideways. Now my directional arrows are starting to get good. So I always tell people, what's coming at you? Right now, the corners are coming at you. But in reality, a hip and a shoulder are going to be coming at you. Okay? So admittedly, I will reach and, and block with my hand sometimes. But this could be a recipe for disaster if, if somebody wrist locks. Right? So if you can, try to use the blades. This is better. right? But I'm not going to be trying to reinforce this with just my arms for now or for long. I'm going to throw my other leg over. Okay? I'm going to throw over it. So here. And some instructors would say, I remember what Gabby says too, this is just showing what side for, for my opponent to pass. Okay. Well, if I need to, I'm going to recover to that side too. Uh, like so here. Okay. I'm going to windshield wiper my leg. And now I move myself off to the side here. So I'm not going to do this more than twice because in reality, if, if you're having to recover that many times in a row, uh, the, the opponent's probably going to end up passing your bar. So realistically, I only, my, personally, I only have to do this one time. The person's getting really vigorous, they might try to pass again. 
but they're probably going to end up stopping at that point because they, they used a lot of energy. Anyway, a good passer shouldn't stop, right? They, they, they should keep going, but generally people will stop after the second or the third pass. There's only so many passes that you can put, put yourself through before you start to get too exhausted on this. Okay, so I'm going to show the motion again before I set the timer. Okay, windshield wiper, bad directional arrows, turn sideways, good directional arrows. I'll throw my leg over, and I'm still imagining that this leg is across that fictional hip line here, right? I'm using my jiu-jitsu hook on the corner here. So I turn, windshield wiper, still trying to keep contact, still blocking the same old thing, thinking about those, those legs less with my with less with my hands. Admittedly, I'll push with my hands sometimes, but believe me, you'll risk yourself more often, and you're, you're gonna really hate yourself for doing that. Last thing, throw my leg over here, okay? And I'm just gonna reset every time over here. That's also a good thing to do too. So I'm just gonna set my timer for one whole minute. Always resetting back to this cold guard scenario. Here, big and I'm getting stacked. Float on the mat, hip escape, block, hip in the shoulder. I, like I said, middle hands here, leg over to reinforce. Logically, you shouldn't only have you should only have to do this once or twice. Then I'm gonna move myself right back. If you want to rewind, put on the ground, open. Now I'll go back. Okay, leg over, windshield wiper, turn myself aside, windshield wiper, leg over. I'm just gonna shut up. Right here, leg. I know I said I was going to show up. At some point, I'll show you how to do this with a human. It's kind of a hard drill to do with a human if the person on top doesn't quite know what they're doing. So I'm going to forego doing the side control ones for today because it's probably going to end up keeping me here for another 15 minutes or so. So I'm just going to, going to cool down and stretch out with everybody. Maybe any final thoughts that come into my brain. That was a good workout for me. I'd be very surprised if anybody would be able to, be able to follow along, just especially given all the, the MacGyver situations we have to deal with. I see everybody being very creative, taking your dummies outside and having a crazy setup in the garage. Very impressed. I'm still coming in here. I'm still working, obviously. Still trying to try to stay in shape. Don't get too out of shape, everybody. Want, want you to come back and have no excuses. You know, we all have plenty of excuses, just in general. See how the world crumbles here in the next couple months. Both legs forward. Now on Wednesday, I'll probably end up showing what I didn't show today, which is just some, some side control motions. Uh, there's probably some, some extra ones that I forgot too. There's always some more things to do. But fly. And this is the most important time to stretch is after training. Your muscles should be able to stretch out even more. Some people try to overstretch in the beginning. Depending on how hydrated you are or not, you end up kind of hurting yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Just gonna get a couple others. Only four, only back. I'm not just trying to pad the time right now, not at all. Switchy, switchy. Last two, I'm gonna bring this one over. Over, looking back behind me. Switch one last thing. All right, today we're going to look pretty for everybody. Say goodbye. All right, team, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. I've been your host, Trevor Ireland. I've been here with martial arts, doing what we can to facilitate all this quarantine-style jiu-jitsu. 
thanks for tuning in, team. I'll do my best to rock your impression. <laughs> That was a few snake hours. <laughs> <laughs>